Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Did you know that Casey and Vicky were in Evansville for some time, since May 3rd in fact, so they were there around about 7 or 8 days staying in the same place. It looks like they were ready to make their move around the same day the second vehicle was identified. What we're going to do now is go into further context, further information that you may not know about in terms of this case, going uh, both to the beginning of this incident and also to um, what happened on the day that it all came to a crashing end. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So according to CNN, before the chase on uh, the 10th kind of happened, uh, the officers were conducting surveillance. Uh, They don't say who they were, but probably may have been U.S. Marshals. They saw Vicky White exiting hotel with a wig on. Now, the fact that they saw her coming out of a hotel suggests that they were watching this hotel to begin with. And that part isn't really clarified how long they'd been watching them, um, unless it was just that they were driving by a hotel and saw her coming out. Um, but that is certainly interesting. You know, was there a stakeout? Um, did they suspect that, that this was them? And they were just waiting to make sure. Um, and also this information comes from U.S. Marshal Matt Keeley. So it's a marshal that tells us about the surveillance that was going on and her coming out of a hotel wearing a wig. So she didn't dye her hair. She wore a wig. And then she and Casey White uh, got into this Cadillac and then they drove off. They don't give a time, but... Um, Uh, If you think about it, this was already a very dangerous move. Staying in a hotel uh, meant they could still be seen by witnesses and were CCTV. The alternative would have been to, for example, sleep in a vehicle. But that would also have uh, dangers and carry risks of its own. So the vehicle drives off. The authorities, that's obviously the U.S. Marshals, possibly also some local law enforcement, they continue to watch them until there's a vehicle pursuit. And I think what is happening is they are driving, the authorities are driving in unmarked vehicles, sort of dark pickup trucks, right? And this leads to them being spotted. So the authorities are hanging back, but, uh, you know, obviously the, this couple are super agitated, super nervous and, and kind of hyper vigilant. And so you get the idea, they realized they were being followed, and they were being followed. And when they recognized this, the driver, and apparently the driver was Casey White, panicked, right? The car, according to CNN, the car wrecked and rolled over. According to Keeley, Casey White was driving the car, according to the U.S. Marshals. Um, I've gotten some other information that, um, Vicky White was the driver. I actually overheard, I was listening to a local news channel where a reporter could be heard indistinctly in the background repeating what was being said to her for clarity, specifically the part that Vicky was driving. Um, my understanding is that at least one law enforcement vehicle struck the Cadillac, but the question is, did this happen before or after it went off the road? Uh, Some of the footage I've seen, the damage to the law enforcement vehicle is pretty substantial. So one's got to wonder, when did that happen and how did it happen? Um, The Cadillac didn't seem to leave the road on a bend. The road didn't seem to be slippery. So what happened? Was it struck and that's why it left the road? Um, Also from CNN, quote, officers were able to remove the inmate, that's Casey White, from the red car, but Vicky White was pinned inside with a gunshot wound to her head. That's according to Keeley, end quote. Now, I'd assume the gun, I I did assume the gunshot wound was to her head, but, and, and thus not survivable. It may be that she was pinned inside because of the impact you know, you can imagine if a car rolls or it comes to a jolting stop. 
like quite a um, violent, uh, severe jolt um, that you could be pinned down because you're injured or because that the car turns on the side where, where you are, a passenger. Um, I'm just saying if she's pinned down because of the, the violence of the, the, the vehicle stopping, then that may have actually caused her to realize it was truly game over. And that may have been quite shocking and quite terrifying. You know, you can imagine that her day-to-day -day life was in a way quite boring, quite routine. And although some aspects of this whole thing may have been exciting and even maybe romantic, this part was likely quite terrifying. And the, and the very end of it, even more terrifying. And so she obviously wanted to escape these feelings of terror and horror and impending, you know, the impending end and wanted to sort of take control over the way her life kind of comes to an end. But she must have thought to herself, whoa, sorry, that is the cat jumping onto my shoulder. Anyway, this um, exit from the hotel and the drive from the hotel uh, near Evansville uh, was was obviously the last roll of the dice. They didn't know it, but ultimately that was what it was. And then this is how it ends. And you you know it, it truly was game over. Um, not only her retirement was game over, but her love affair was game over. And she must have thought her life, as she saw it, was game over. And then yeah, you have the double irony of a correctional officer not being able to face a return to the very facility she ran, apparently with an un unblemished record, apparently perfectly, but not being able to face returning there and obviously being on the other side of all that, being the person um, that is needing to be corrected rather than the correctional officer. What is really interesting about the very final moments is that Casey White told the U.S. Marshals to please help his wife and said that she had shot herself. So I don't know whether the officers understood that that had occurred or whether they found that out from him. Um, that certainly puts it in a slightly different context. Um, he'd also, I think he told them that she shot herself in the head. But anyway, that is what happened. And um, he also told the U.S. Marshals, that he didn't do it. It wasn't him. And um, Keeley, the U.S. Marshal, says, to his knowledge, Casey and Vicky weren't married. So that aspect is definitely quite interesting. Did they get married? Why did he say that? You also have Casey sticking up for himself until the very end. And one's got to ask, where is Vicky's, was it $90,000 from the sale of her home? Where, where is that money or what's left of it? Sheriff Singleton also said the following, and this is quoting from CNN. This escape was obviously well planned and calculated. A lot of preparation went into this. They had plenty of resources, had cash, had vehicles, had everything they needed to pull this off. And that's what made this last week and a half so challenging. We were starting from ground zero. And not only that, we they got a six-hour head start on us. And so I think what um, gave them this result, the fact that they apprehended these fugitives, was things like tracking the vehicles, looking at CCTV, but probably most important, keeping the case high profile, because doing that would keep the pressure on the suspects. It would limit their ability to move and it would make their movement more difficult when they did move. And I think this is what brought it to a rapid end in the result, um, in the end. Uh, that being said, the ending is clearly not the best case scenario here. And probably the better way to have apprehended them would have been to separate them while they were on foot. You know, perhaps if one of them went to buy food or something like that. Um, but that would be at some risk to law enforcement. Remember, they were armed. But think about it from that perspective. You think you found your suspects, but they're both armed and they're together. How do you go about getting them safely? Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.